Welcome to today's lecture. This is the second part on the properties of milk. In the previous one, I have discussed about the most common and important physicochemical properties of milk. Today, I will discuss mostly the other physical properties of milk, which are comparatively less common. But it is important to know about this in details, especially for the postgraduate students. So these properties are like viscosity, surface tension, refractive index, freezing point depression, then effect of heat or coagulation, specific heat, and also about the fat rising or specific heat, etc. The first one is the viscosity. The viscosity of a fluid is a measure of the resistance to flow and is important in processing operations. So any liquid will face a resistance for flowing and that is called viscosity. Viscosity of milk is mainly due to milk proteins and fats and to a minor extent due to the lactose and salts in the solution form. Milk is 1.5 to 1.7 times more viscous than water. So that means it can flow more with more resistance. Viscosity decreases when the temperature increases. This is because when the viscosity, uh, uh, this is because the temperature causes melting of fat and that re reduces the resistance and viscosity also goes down. Similarly, homogenization increases the viscosity because homogenization breaks the larger particles and distributes more evenly and thereby it causes more resistance and increase the viscosity. This viscosity is measured by the instrument called viscometer. The viscosity of milk determines the rate of creaming, that is the cream rising to the surface, then rates of mass heat transfer, how the heat transfer happens during heating of milk and the flow condition in dairy processes. Whenever there is dairy processing, it has to travel through many pipes. So that flow also is affected with the viscosity. And the factors affecting viscosity, as I said earlier, that is the temperature, fat content, homogenization, souring or microbial growth, and agitation or mixing of the milk. So here is the standard values for viscosity, which is expressed in the unit centipise at 20 degrees Celsius. In case of cow milk, it is 2.0. In case of buffalo milk, it is 1.8 in skim milk 1.5 and in whey it is 1.2. The second property is surface tension. Surface tension is defined as a state of stress at the surface of a liquid due to the attraction of the molecules for each other and it is expressed in dynes. So these forces of attraction converge to the center of molecules from all directions. So this surface tension decreases when temperature raised. At 60 degrees Celsius, surface tension is about 40 to 45 dynes per centimeter. The whole milk has slightly lower surface tension than skim milk and of cream still lower. So this surface tension is a common property for all liquids and it is due to the stress at the surface due to the attraction of molecules for each other and that force converge at the center of the molecule which makes a difference in its property and behavior. In continuation about surface tension, Surface tension of milk is lower than water and proteins are responsible for this and the presence of fat further reduces the surface tension. Acidity and churning 
reduces surface tension and surface tension is measured by falling drop or platinum ring method using an instrument called tensiometer. Here is the standard values for normal different kind of milk for surface tension that is in case of water it is 72 to 73 dynes per centimeter in case of skim milk it is 57.4 in case of whole milk it is 55.3 and in case of cream with a 30 to 35 percent fat it is 49.6 dynes per centimeter the next physical property of milk is the refractive index this is sometimes used to detect the adulteration of milk with water, the refraction depends on the type of molecules and their concentration in a substance or in a liquid. The total refraction is the sum of individual refractions of the constituents present in a solution. So in case of milk, addition of water lower the refractive index. And the refractive index of milk is about 1.3440 to 1.3485. So this refractive index is a property about the refraction of light which sometimes is useful in detection of adulteration of milk with water. Now the next one is freezing point depression. In the previous lecture, I have discussed about freezing point of milk, which is little bit lower than the uh, water. In case of water, it is 0 degree at 4 degree Celsius or in case of pure water. Now, in case of milk, the freezing point is little lower than water that is minus 0 0.525 to 0 0.565. So, this reduction from 0, it is called freezing point depression. So, milk freezes at slightly lower temperature than water and this lowering, this going down of freezing point is called freezing point depression and this has an important use in detection of adulteration of milk with water. The average freezing point depression in case of cow is 0 0.547 degree, in case of buffalo 0 0.549 and in case of bulk milk, it is 0 0.53 degree. Now, freezing point depression has its lot of significance. As I said, the freezing point will depression will be more if water is added as adulteration. If the freezing point depression is less, then water is added. It is very sensitive. Up to 3% water can be detected. In case of sour milk, the freezing point depression will be more. In case of boiling and sterilization, there will be more freezing point depression. In case of pasteurization, there is no effect. Whereas the limitation is, it cannot detect addition of skim milk or removal of fat. This freezing point depression is measured by hot weight cryoscope. Now the next property is electrical conductivity of milk. In pure solution, conductivity is a function of the ionic concentration. That is, the electrical conductivity depends on the concentration of ions. In milk, colloid substances obstruct the ion in their migration and increases the conductivity. The specific conductance of milk reflects the concentration and activity of ions. So the conductivity is indirectly related to the concentration of the ions present and their activity. The electrical conductivity increases with increase in temperature. Maybe due to increase in temperature, the ionization will be more or the concentration of ions will increase and that will increase the electrical conductivity. Electrical conductivity test can be used to detect neutralizers and some kind of abnormal milk, especially in case of infection or mastitis.
milk has an electrical conductivity in the range of 0.003 to 0.010 moles. The next property is the thermal conductivity that is how the milk is transmitting the heat. So it determines how fast milk is cooled or heated. The thermal conductivity increases with increase in temperature. When the temperature is higher naturally the thermal conductivity will be more and decreases with increase in concentration of fat. So the fat content if it is more then the thermal conductivity will reduce that has a connection with specific heat which I am going to discuss in the next. Higher the fat content the lower will be the thermal conductivity. At 30 degrees Celsius thermal conductivity of milk is 13.5 into 10 to the power 4 calorie per centimeter per second. So this is a complicated unit. In the next we will understand the background of this thermal conductivity which is related to specific heat. The next physical property of milk is the specific heat. It is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of a material by 1 degree. So specific heat is directly proportional to efficiency of heating or cooling a substance. By knowing specific heat, we can know the amount of heat required for heating to a temperature or vice versa. From the formula H is equal to M S T that is the heat required that is H, M is the mass, S is the specific heat and T is the differential of temperature. The greatest specific heat of milk and cream is at temperature between 10 to 20 degrees Celsius. As I said previously, the specific heat plays an important role for heat conductivity and here we will see the specific heat of whole milk is 0 0.918 to 0 0.938 and in case of cream it is lower, I said earlier, it is 0 0.750 to 0 0.923 and this varies widely depending upon the fat content and the temperature. So if the fat content is more, naturally the specific height will be lower side and the thermal conductivity of milk will be less. Now we will see about the effect of heats on milk. Heating milk near the boiling point will cause a film or sheen to form on the surface and mainly due to calcium case in it. Autoclaving milk that is around 118 or 120 degrees Celsius will cause brewing due to Maillard reaction. At high temperature, protein and sugar will undergo a reaction that is called Maillard reaction. Heating milk to high temperature cause cooked flavor and this is due to production of sulfhydrils at high temperature. And heating milk also cause coagulation of all proteins. That is the property of protein get changed which by denaturation that we are going to discuss next. So this is another property that is coagulation that is mainly relevant for the protein. High heat or acidity or enzymes causes coagulation of proteins and it loses solubility. So this is a denaturation of protein and it loses its natural property and also the solubility. Casein get coagulated by the action of renin or renate and by the lactic acid producing organism also due to the lower uh, pH or high acidity. Milk also get coagulated by tartaric acid, citric acid and lemon juice etc. So this property is used for making the paneer or uh, other uh, coagulated milk products where the acidity is developed through using starter culture or sometimes the rennet is used or in case of paneer preparation either lemon juice or citric acid is used for coagulation at a higher temperature. Milk coagulates by heating also in khoa. When we make khoa it is continuously heated so naturally all the proteins get coagulated and become sticky. So this coagulation has a direct connection between acidity and temperature. If the acidity is less, the coagulation happens at a higher temperature. 
when the acidity is very high then the coagulation can happen at a very low temperature we can see from this table at 0.25 percent the temperature for coagulation is 82 degree whereas when it is 0.35 percent it is 66 degree when 0.4 percent it is 38 to 43 degree when 0.5 percent it is 24 to 27 degree celsius and at 0.57 percent acidity the coagulation can happen at 16 to 18 degrees celsius so 0.5 percent is a very high acidity so in such case milk will coagulate in normal temperature itself another property of milk is foaming milk has the property of forming foam on agitation or stirring the milk protein and fat reduce the surface tension and are the causes of the foaming proteins are adsorbed by thin film surrounding an air bubble and this gives stability to the entrapped air so the proteins forms a thin film and that entrap the air and that gives the foaming milk fat not only increases the foaming capacity but also increases the stability of the foam milk foam is unstable and breaks down when allowed to stand so though there is a foam formation due to agitation or due to stirring that foam cannot stand for long time so it is unstable and it breaks slowly after some time another property of milk is cream rising or cream layer formation when whole milk is permitted to stand either raw or boiled the fat rises to the top and eventually forms a layer packed with fat globules which is called cream or cream layer so in case of raw milk it is less whereas in case of boiled milk it is more the difference in specific gravity between the milk serum and milk fat is one of the most important factors responsible for cream rising so milk fat has got a lower specific gravity or density so it has a tendency to go to the up due to the gravitational effect or force for rapid and complete rising of milk fat the fat globules must aggregate or clump together so there is a property of clumping together of fat globules then it behaves like a larger mass and a, with a higher radius and it get a more support for rising to the top or more faster the rate of creaming is dependent on the factors that affect the clumping so when the clumping happens more or faster then the creams rising to the surface also faster here we will understand about the fat clumping that is the accumulation or coalescence of different fat molecule which gives it a larger fat molecule like behavior and that leads to the rising to the surface and that phenomenon is called clumping of fat in fresh milk fat globules are separate and do not rise rapidly it depends on the radius of the fat globule that the effect of the gravitational force during heating a thick cream layer forms at the surface of milk and because during heating clumps formed have a greater radius and it rise faster the fat particles are held together in the clumps by the mucin like material surrounding each fat particle so each particle fat particle joins together and behaves like a larger particle or molecule and that is due to the clumping when clusters are not clear uh, clear fat they entrapped plasma also so in that case it is becoming heavier and it cannot rise faster so this is the background fat clumping which is responsible for rising of fat to the surface and the cream layer formation which is very high in case of heating or boiling of milk this is another property adhesiveness of milk a piece of paper moistened with milk sticks to a flat surface of wood glass or metal so this shows that it has got adhesiveness this property is undoubtedly due to casein that is the protein which is largely used in the manufacture of casein glue one of the strongest glue made in the industry so milk has got large amount of protein so in case of low quality milk uh, the casein is separated and that is used for making the glue like we make 
gelatin from good quality protein here the low quality protein is converted to glue and which is used as a, a adhesive in the industry here is the last property of milk that is re relevant to the specific gravity this is called Reck-Nagel phenomena about specific gravity we have discussed in the previous lecture that is the same as density but as a ratio of density of water after milking the specific gravity tends to increase rapidly for a short time and then more slowly until it becomes finally stable so the specific gravity is not immediately stable even at the first point it increases rapidly at the latter part it increases slowly this change of specific gravity is called as Reck-Nagel effect. The rapid rise in specific gravity immediately after milking is due to escape of gases from the milk. Immediately after milking, slow, the, slowly the gas will come out from milk and that causes rapid rise in specific gravity. Whereas the slower uh, latter change is due to slow acidification, solidification of the fat. So the secondly, there is a slow increase in the specific gravity that is due to the solidification of fat that gives little bit of higher specific gravity. So this together it is called as Reck-Nagel phenomenon. Now we are at the end of today's lecture. This is the second lecture on the properties of milk or the physicochemical properties. In the first lecture, we have discussed about the physicochemical properties of milk, which are more common, more important and must be learned by all undergraduates. In the second lecture, it is all the physical properties, which are comparatively less common or less commonly used in the industry. However, it is important to understand them and it is important for proper understanding of the dairy industry and dairy processing, especially for the postgraduate students. So here we have discussed about the viscosity, surface tension, refractive index, effect of heat, coagulation, and also about the clumping or rising of fat and a little bit about the freezing point depression and Reck-Nagel phenomenon related to specific gravity. So hope this will be easy for you to understand. Thank you.